Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you so much uh, for joining us for this live webinar session. A very warm welcome to all of you joining us uh, right now. My name is Jerry and I'm part of the People Matters team and it's a delight for me to welcome you all for this discussion this morning. Uh, so we are talking today about a strength-based approach to talent development, how to empower managers, and we're bringing this conversation to you in partnership with Gallup. So strength-based development is a powerful approach to both professional and personal development. It encourages individuals to focus on their needs, needs strengths rather than their weaknesses. And, um, and as a result of implementing this approach, companies have seen improved sales, profits, customer satisfaction, employee engagement, and they've reduced turnover. So we're really excited uh, for this topic and we have a panel of experts uh, with us and uh, we're really excited to bring this conversation in partnership with Gallup. So before I introduce the speakers, I wanted to also note that we will have a question and answer session at the end of this uh, conversation. So if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, feedback, uh, please feel free to voice that in the comment section that should appear at the right hand side of your screen. And uh, we will take them as the conversation progresses and also towards the end of the discussion. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll introduce the speakers for today. We have with us uh, Dr. Manavi Patak, who is the head for learning and organizational development at Samsung R&D Institute, India. And Dr. Manavi has expertise in driving people's strategy with a focus on leadership development, talent and succession. Uh, she's also worked with companies like PwC, Tata Motors and Cipla. And she maintains a strong academic interest and is also visiting faculty at different B schools. She is an ICF certified coach and is a regular contributor to HR magazines and blogs. She's also a fellow in management from Exila Rai and uh, she brings together insights from academia and the wisdom of practitioners. So thank you so much, Manavi, for joining us today. All right. So we also have with us uh, John K. John, who is the Vice President for Learning and Development at Reliance Industries Limited. And uh, John is an HR professional with a heart to engage employees and organizations to bring out their best through thought leadership and the principles of positive psychology. John comes with 30 plus years of experience in the human resources function, and he really is passionate about learning and development. Thank you so much, uh, John, for joining us today. It's great to have you with us. Pleasure. Also with us today is Krishnan Unni, who is the Chief People Officer for Mega Life Sciences. And uh, Krishnan started his career in sales with Allergen and later joined Pfizer. His next appointment was with HLL Life Care. And uh, he joined uh, Mega Life Sciences in 2007, and he brings a very diverse uh, experience in his career of handling international product management, business development, and talent management. Since 2010, he's leading the People Initiatives with an aim to strengthen employee wellness, uh, developing great teams, leaders, engaged employees, and to create that great organization to work for. Thank you so much, Krishnan, for joining us today. We also have with us Puneet Pratap Singh, who is the Regional Director for Research and Analytics, uh, APAC at Gallup. And uh, Puneet will be moderating our discussion today. And he serves as a lead consultant to some of Gallup's top clients in India, New Zealand, Australia, China, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East regions. Uh, he has worked across uh, global offices uh, at Gallup. And his prime focus is leading the research and analytics in the region. And he's armed with a deep understanding of science and statistics, and he brought partners with uh, project teams. And he also has experience of working with employees and customer projects across different industries, including manufacturing, hospitality, IT, automobile, banking, and telecom. Thank you so much, uh, Puneet, for joining us today. And it's a pleasure to have you all with us. Over to you, Puneet. Perfect, perfect. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry. And welcome, welcome everyone to our uh, panel discussion. Uh, let me start with a very basic question. What is the meaning of strength-based approach when it comes to talent management? 
and more importantly how does it help individuals achieve greater success and fulfillment so it all started with a simple question from one of our uh, founders at gallup what would happen if we studied what was right with people versus what's wrong with people now let me explain that with a fun exercise so um uh, we'll do a small fun exercise and give yourself a mental nod or if you are sitting in a group uh, raise your hand or if you are joining virtually maybe give us a thumbs up if you are someone who talks to people whenever you are in elepa elevators airplanes stores or even wherever you go just give yourself a mental nod or raise your hand or give a thumbs up on on the screen now how about if you are someone who writes down like a list of things and always sticks to it there are you have lists and notes and you put ticks to them once you achieve that now how about this is an interesting one if like whenever you are you commuting from your office or going somewhere are you someone who always picks someone to race while driving or you are driving in your lane with your own calmness like give yourself a mental nod if you are someone who picks up uh, someone to race while driving how about if you tend to be skeptical until given some proof are you someone who's always looking to see what's inside the walnut shell or what's inside uh, that oyster are you someone who does that another one if you are someone who cleans your house or your apartment before you can relax you want everything in order you'll probably have a wardrobe where clothes are either lined with regards to color combinations or casuals formals i'm someone who's got a dirty wardrobe but maybe there are people who've got a very clean and crisp house or an apartment final one raise your hand or give yourself a mental nod if you are someone who can figure out the plot of the movie before anyone else does hopefully you're not releasing the uh, spoilers but you can figure out the uh, plot in your head uh, when you are watching a movie so what was this all about if you think about it these are traits this is who we are neither good nor bad this is just who we are and most of the times these traits are not changeable so a quick question can you be taught these natural traits now before we uh, jump deeper into it and start to talk about strengths let's first understand talent what is talent talent is a naturally recurring pattern of thought feelings or behaviors that can be productively applied think of a uh, talent like a fertile piece of land and strength is the crop that comes out of it which is your ability to deliver uh, consistent near perfect performance in a specific task so that's the definition of uh, talent and strength but what we want you to do is we want you to put seeds and fertilizers in that fertile crop that is the investment so when you put that investment into talent it comes into uh, and builds into a strength a quick question if i were to ask everyone on the call today on that discussion today that if you had two lands one super fertile and one not so fertile where will you put the fertilizers and the seeds now that same intuition carries to our workplace as well we need to spend a majority of our time on our talents to develop them into strengths to build those strengths and at the same point of time we want to manage our weaknesses as well with this context now i would love to hand over the conversation to john to share from his vast experience i know john you've been working on strengths for a very very uh, long time you've been an experienced uh, advocate for strengths as well would love to hear from you that in your experience how have you seen that strengths have achieved helped an individual 
achieve a much greater success and very importantly that need fulfillment that fulfillment with regards to your work would love to hear some of your experience on that so thank you <clears throat> thanks for having me first of all yeah so i've been an advocate of strength i think since 2015 and um, i was sold to the concept of strength the minute i got hooked on to it uh, <clears throat> and the reason is pretty simple because um, the bottom line is you all of us want to be successful and the proverbial question for most talent managers and hr managers is to how to bring the best out of another employee this is a fundamental question that we ask even today and if you really go back to research <clears throat> you know a lot of work has been happening in this space and if i were to go back to the late 90s or early 90s uh, dr howard gardner had come up with this fantastic uh uh you know theory on multiple intelligences where he said that people have multiple intelligences and intelligences outside of subjects that we study at school uh you may be brilliant at physics and chemistry and maths but you also may be brilliant when it comes to cooking or you could be an usain bolt that runs you don't need to be great at physics or chemistry but you can blaze the track right so you got to find out what is that gift that you have what is the talent that you have so uh howard gardner study was a kind of you know uh, went against the stream and soon after that uh, another wave that started off in europe then hit in america was daniel goleman's emotional quotient where he brought in the concept of how he he found out that the greater you climb the ladder of success lesser is your dependence on iq and greater is your dependence on eq where you need to relate with people rather than know what to do right uh, and so you got to have that kind of intelligence as well then came strengths finder uh, through marcus buckingham when he actually got that introduced in 2003 but we were exposed when i was working for hcl to another concept and that concept was passion assessment and i love that because if i were to tell you virat kohli you know what to tell after that you just eat those two names and then you can fill the balance or if i say sachin tendulkar you can fill the balance or if i just say dhiruvai ambani you can say whatever you want to say after that the passion just drives the person to skill right so if i were to just go back one step which is strengths finder and you touched upon it is what is the core of the person what is the core in that person and that is trait right and most uh, talent managers and hr leaders would have been exposed to mbti mbti is a type assessment right now what's the difference between type and trait type will tell you how similar you are to everybody else trait will tell you how you're different from everybody else now which do you want i'll give you a choice do you want to know that you're similar to a certain percentage of people or would you want to know that i'm different from everybody else and this is the difference and that is the beauty of strength it will tell you what you are different and how you are different from everybody else it doesn't put you in a box so that's number one the uniqueness of a person um you know my favorite uh, i don't know that can take so long but my favorite uh, motivational speaker zig ziglar he said every third person in this world is either extremely beautiful wonderfully handsome or entirely creative now look at the person to the left of you and tell them it can't be you now look at the person to the right also and say it can't be you also so who are you left with you're already left with yourself you are the most beautiful you are the most creative you are the most handsome person on god's earth don't let anybody tell you you're useless we are living in a world where even our bosses need to look at us in once a year and tell us we're useless all right now you need to understand what do you have unique in you that others don't have and when you understand that when you fall in love with yourself that's when your uniqueness kicks in and so strength basically gives you that grounding you know when i got introduced to strength my hope hit another level my confidence hit another level and you won't believe it i was just around the corner for an interview for a promotion and you think you know, every interview has one standard question what's that question john tell me something about your strengths and something about your weaknesses what do you think i was going to say i was going to tell them my, my top 5 and i rattled it in a way with conviction they had no other no other option but to give me the promotion why because i was not trying to get it from thin air i was talking out of conviction now this is what people need to have so the minute you identify with what you have already in you and then invest in it like you showed in that uh, uh, in that formula i invest yeah. over a period of time that becomes my strength and then gotcha. it becomes quite you know uh, habitual or second nature uh, or muscle memory whatever you want to call it because yes. i'll just keep doing it over and over again every time beautiful 
That is fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for that, John. How about you, Krishan? Like, I'm sure you, I feel you're someone who've implemented this approach at a very, very vast scale. I'm sure there is a lot that you can share on this, that how have you seen that it has actually achieved greater success for people? Fine. <clears throat> Thanks, Pandit. Nice to be here. So, so it's basically, the question is uh, the meaning of strengths-based approach in talent management. How do we put it in perspective, isn't it? So I think, uh, yeah, as you said, you know, we did it on a scale for, uh, say, different countries, multiple locations. But let me take it to a simpler version to explain. Uh, imagine you have a sibling, and most of you uh, attending or listening may have. And, you, know, you grew up in the same house with same parents. Uh, I'm sure you will agree with me that, you know, both of you are uh, completely different. There may be some similarities, but but you grew up different, to be different. And uh, your parents may know whom to call to fix something if something breaks in the house. And they know who to call to uh, to f do some other jobs. So even, even those siblings uh, who are born to same parents, grown in the same household, have so much of difference. And they all develop a unique, say, what is a mental pathway to gather information, to process, and to make decisions. So we are, we are such diverse you know, in terms of the differences that we all have. And uh, then we go into education, where it's all standardized, standard education system and standard evaluation. And then most of the time, what we see is that this is the common practice which is seen in organizations as well. Organizations have different jobs to be done. and um, Basically, what happens is we have these job descriptions and we expect people to deliver those job descriptions. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, this is this is important for the organization to get the jobs done. But at the same time, how do we bring in a focus to uh, bring out the best in people and identifying what they are capable of and Maybe fine tuning the JDs to make sure you know it fits, it makes the right fitment for a particular person. And whatever needs to be filtered out can be filtered out, and a new job can be created, and we can find somebody to do that particular job as a right fit. So, from house, I mean, where we are born to grow to education to workplace, I mean, we will have to bring in this kind of a slight transformation where we respect each other's differences. When I say differences, it may not be just the differences that you and me have, but the uniqueness that we have in ourselves, which is the natural way of doing things, like what I said in house, you know, parents know whom to call for. Um, if, if such kind of uh, system can be brought in workplace, that brings in a kind of engagement for the individual to do a particular job, be actively engaged, and you see the sense of curiosity to learn and grow and a sense of fulfillment. And, 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 and basically, which organization doesn't want that and which individual doesn't want that. You know? So if you ask me to put strengths based in a nutshell of how to put it in talent management, this is what strengths are. So at home, you get to understand or your parents understand <laughs> these strengths better. Similarly, we will have to have a framework within the organization to understand better and then see how we nurture it. We add skills and knowledge, as you mentioned and make sure the employee has an opportunity to spend most of the time in the areas of their strengths. Absolutely. Again, brilliant, brilliant. And I see both of you talking about one very important thing, like uh, acknowledging the uniqueness of the people. And we are in the era where inclusion is so important and we want everyone to be appreciated for their uniqueness. So I think that's a very, very great point. I would love to bring Manvi in because you have very special experience of working very closely with people when it comes to creating IDPs or working very hands-on with strength. I think that individual perspective is something that you can definitely add uh, mm -hmm. with regards to. So in your experience, Manvi, how has strengths added for fulfillment of individuals? Yeah, thank you so much, Puneet. And uh, I'd like to just uh, thank uh, both uh, Mr. John and uh, Mr. Krishnan to set up the context. I think, you know, Mr. John beautifully brought the concept 
conceptual knowledge behind uh, you know the strengths he spoke about gartner's multiple intelligence theory and um, you know christian spoke about you know things in a very real real time and a real life way so i think you know this has clearly brought it out very well i just like to you know add on saying that you know strength based approach to talent management is uh, based on the basic premise that people's talents are unique and enduring and individuals should develop their talents into strengths and each person's greatest room for growth is his area of uh, his or her area of strength uh, this basically this philosophy believes that focus on your strength because weaknesses are hard to crack and strengths basically you know there's a definition also of strength which they have defined it as pre-existing capacities for for a particular way of behaving thinking and feeling which actually enables optimal functioning or performance and that is very authentic or very natural to the user okay so you know keeping all this in mind uh if when we focus on strength it is very very natural that you will you will emerge stronger you will emerge to be better okay and because we have spoken about stalwarts in this field uh, i'm sure you must be knowing about the book uh, by uh, marcus buckingham and donald clifton now discover your strengths in fact in that book there's a very beautiful line i've read this book it says that the real tragedy of life is not that each one of us doesn't have enough strengths but we fail to use those strengths because there's so much of focus on fixing the weaknesses that we don't focus on what is natural and what is uh, you know very very natural and very uh, normal to us uh, i'd like to just give one more example because we have spoken about uh, you know organizations one example which textbooks talk about is that uh, you know uh, the founder and ceo of body shop okay she was a lady anita rodick and she is one person she's no more she's late anita rodrick now she was regarded as one of the most innovative and visionary ceos okay and by her own admission anita say was not of a very business person because body shop is into very sustainable and you know ethical uh, uh, cosmetics uh, business so she had her weak areas uh, where it relate to related to financial management and administration and she actually didn't spend so much of time on fixing or improving these areas her vision was so strong and that uh, and her idealism was so strong, so strong that she would attract people with these areas these strengths to work under her and you know this this was the way she worked and she set up a beautiful business so we also have examples of success where people have actually worked on their strengths and developed to be very visionary and innovative leaders brilliant brilliant thank you thank you for sharing that perspective very important point uh, that manvi i feel that you've mentioned is that knowing who you are and then applying on that so managing your lesser talents through multiple things but focusing on your core talents and building on that fantastic fantastic to uh, hear that but it happens in all approaches and for our strength approach as well there are some advantages and there are some limitations and i'm sure there are some limitations to this approach as well when it comes to uh, practical application and who better than krishnan to share about uh, practical application of of strengths so uh, krishnan what are the some of the advantages or limitations that you've seen when it comes to strengths when compared to our conventional approaches okay so i mean um, let me also bring another scenario here you know, similar to the first scenario Let's get, go back home. Okay, so imagine a kid comes home uh, with grades for different subjects: A for math, B for language, C for biology. As parents, you know, most parents may find a tutor for biology, C. And imagine, imagine the kid doesn't have a knack to understand or learn biology. It's going to be a challenge. but given the education system definitely we need to improve there is no compromise for that but however i mean if you look at uh, math where kid got a and kid enjoys doing math and imagine you find a tutor for math similar to the example that you said of the fertile field gene 
the kid may want to really learn more. You know, kid may look forward for uh, you know the math tutoring class. And while in class or doing math, the kid may lose track of time. And even after the class, the kid may feel energized and he will feel enthusiastic. But at the same time, he may not get the same sense if the kid is pushed into a biology to, I mean, to train where the kid has come with a lower score and kid is unable to get that, you know, really the, the, the subtle things which comes in. The kid may not find it interesting to go to the class. You may have to push. And even after the class, kid may feel drained. So you will not feel that energy and enthusiasm even after the class. So, so the point that I'm trying to drive here is uh, when, you, when you force a certain learning, which is in the areas of weakness, where there is a lack of talent, it's not a skill or a knowledge issue, but it's a talent issue where we are not naturally wired. It becomes really difficult for the individual to move up. So uh, in, in conventional system, what we see is also like what I said in my answer to the first question, the organization has a list of jobs to be done. And this is what we expect an individual to perform. And in order to perform, these are the skills and knowledge you need to gain. So now the question is, is it aligned to the natural ability of the individual? And if it is aligned, it will be like going to the math tutorial, where the individual will feel, you know, will look forward for learning and growing in that particular area. Right. If not, it is going to be like biology where the kid is seeing, and it, it's like you need to push. So now let us take one more step ahead. As an organization, in an organization, I'm a manager and I have colleagues. So now if I have a colleague for whom I need to develop certain skills and knowledge in an area where he doesn't have a natural ability, I will have to push, I will have to follow up, I will have to, you know that, right? And many of you here will know that the kind of follow-ups and the kind of uh, uh, you know questions you need to ask and push the individual to move forward. But at the same time, if it is on the other side, if you're trying to bring in the development for an individual in her or his areas of strengths, they may look forward for that kind of development. And as a manager, you get more relaxed and you feel like, you know, your job is much easier. The individual will come forward and may want to learn and grow. Yeah. So when you look at this, these are the advantages. And as an organization, this makes life so easier and simpler. When, when you give individuals that space and give them autonomy to perform or spend more time on their areas of strengths, the life becomes much faster, easier, productive, and with addition of skills and knowledge, the probability of the individual getting to excellence is very, very high. But at the same time, coming to the, the, the other side, you know, if you look at um, conventional approach, as I explained earlier, it is going to be a difficult thing to train if the person is not aligned to the strengths. Limitations, I don't see many limitations coming on the way of strengths-based approach. It will make life easier for the individual, for the manager, and for the organization as well. But it's a question of how do we put that in perspective? Right. Many organizations are already high on a conventional path in terms of managing performance. How do we move away from that and come come towards this? How do we look at strength-based approach to be brought into the organization? So otherwise, Actually. advantages are a long list. Limitations are uh, I don't I don't see any limitation. T, yeah. T. Other than the mindset that needs to be right. Very true, and that is that is very important. And I can see that what you are hinting at is having a well-rounded team of pointed individuals where people yeah. are working on different things together. That's a fantastic thought uh, on that. Uh, how about you, Manvi? Like any limitations that you've seen? And I'm sure uh, there are advantages that you'll talk about. Okay. Let me talk, uh, talk about the advantages first. So, okay. you know, we have been talking about strength-based approach. So let's look at what is the opposite of strength-based approach. And most of the time, it is focusing on the deficits. Okay, that the opposite of strength based approach is the focusing on the deficits. And when we and most of the time, most organizations which don't follow a strength based approach, they focus on the deficit based approach. And when you follow a deficit based approach, what happens is you are following a mindset of a problem fixer. Basically, it means that 
uh, deficit uh, approach basically means that managers are problem solvers and if you see the jds and job ads uh, for a lot of jobs they will have problem solving as a very key requirement and as a result of which managers try to become fixers of problem sol solvers often at the expense of understanding and leveraging what is right and what is working so when you see employees as problems to be fixed discussion is mostly revolves around the weaknesses or the deficits or the failings okay and in fact there was a research which showed that 80% of the managers and employees around the world believe that strengths cannot be understood they are not valued and they are neither appreciated okay and this is true to a lot of extent because very few organizations are bold enough to follow this kind of approach and when organization leaders behave uh, like this in the context of a deficit paradigm the it actually impacts the culture and the practices of the organization because what happens is they they lose sight they because they're just fixing the problem they don't allow for innovation or leveraging opportunities and they are just fixing the problem happy with the status quo and the entire discussion and like you know the manager employee conversations discussions they don't want to do because it's primarily focused on the negatives so managers are just finding and fixing what is wrong in the organization so all this leads to very little improvement so this strength based approach is very very interesting and important because it is based on capitalizing the inherent drive and strengths of the individual and uh, you know in when you when you talk about strengths the the words that come to your mind are basically you know where you are talking about possibilities you're talking about opportunities you're talking about innovation you're talking about thriving so when all these things are there definitely there will be you know how to amplify your strengths how to unleash the potential of individuals and how to foster high performance so these are things which are very very important and one of the limitations if you ask me of a strength based approach is that are we uh, because sometimes people think that strength means that you're ignoring the weaknesses no it's not you're not ignoring but you're working with the individual as a whole you are recognizing the uniqueness of each individual but certain things which i feel that if there are certain areas which are very critical uh, we should focus on that because if it is very it is very critical when it comes to business or when it is something related to compliance or if it is related to something which is like a kind of a threshold or minimum that needs to have the people actually should be focusing on developing those areas also so uh, i think it's it's a the deficit uh, paradigm which organization use are no longer supports and generates uh, the kind of high performance that organizations are looking for these days so strength based approach definitely is the answer Brilliant, brilliant. And then, then what you're saying is I can connect with like, you know, and to the cricketing example we were talking about earlier, that Sachin Tendulkar great at batting, but if required, he can do fielding as well, which might, might not be, but he can manage that part too. So we have to have an approach for focus on his batting, but if required, when it comes to things like compliance, we can definitely get that done. But one thing I would love to get John in here because you talked about uh, type and traits, and this is a concern I sometimes personally also feel when it comes to strengths. Sometimes it starts to become like a label that if I have this strength, I can only do this thing. Have you experienced anything with regards when it comes to limitations? Uh, see, the beauty of strengths is it doesn't tell you that if you have these strengths, you'd be good at this job. It doesn't tell you that at all, right? What it tells you is if you have these strengths, whatever is your job, you if you use these strengths at that job, you will be successful. So which is liberating? Uh, see, the conventional approach is like telling there's one uh, version of ice cream and that is vanilla and everybody has vanilla, meaning to say... Your competent, this is the competency required by X company. Everybody in sales will have to have that competency. So whether I have it in me or don't have it in me, I still have to get that competence in me. It doesn't come naturally. I have to put in effort. You know, for example, a great example will be all salespeople will have to be brash and arrogant and have to be confident in selling. Now, I know a lot of sales guys 
who are not brash, who are not confident, who doesn't speak very uh, outspoken, but they're fantastic when it comes to relationship building. And they get their major accounts only by building relationships. They don't have to be brash. They don't have to talk confidently. And so, you know, that is what I think is the difference between the conventional and the strengths approach, right? I know what my strengths are and I, I leverage that to the tilt uh, rather than telling everybody you've got to be in this box. Uh, whether you like it or not, this is the competency required for the organization. This is what every sales guy will have to have. So you also have. Now, that is difficult because it doesn't come naturally to me, right? And so I need to put in that extra effort. So label uh, in the strengths language does not have as much like a type. In a type, you'll be said you're an ENTJ and, and everybody knows you're an ENTJ. But here, whether you are, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if I say I have positivity, my positivity connects with every other 33 and then gives me a report which is very unique to me. Even though I and maybe may, may Manvi have positivity, the report that Manvi has on positivity is going to be completely different than what I have because her positivity will connect with the balance 33 to give her an individual report. All right. So that labeling technically may not happen. Uh, but yes, some people may say, okay, he's good at this and he'll probably be good at only at that, which I think is wrong to conclude because you can use your, it's like transferable skills. I can use it here. I can go to the next project and use it there. And I keep using as long as I use my, my, my talents in that project for that task, I will be successful. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, John, you've brought out a very interesting point about competency and strength. So in my mind, I think about it that there is an outcome that we want to achieve, mm -hmm. which could be having more sales. But we can yeah. take different pathways. Yes. Uh, someone yeah. high on relationship can achieve those sales through relationship. Someone yeah. can achieve those through an extroverted behavior. Yeah. But in the end, it is better to choose your own path to achieve yeah, uh, that absolutely. outcome. And, and I have no problem in having a threshold like Manvi said. Have a threshold on the basic minimum. Right? You need to have x number of calls and put those stats in place but leave the outcome to that person to drive the way the person wants to drive to get to that result right that's what is liberating that's what gives the employee the opportunity to take their strength for that situation and push for the goal very true very true perfect which brings us to our next part of our conversation which is about implementation how do we scale it uh, within organization. So what are some of the key steps an organization needs to take to ensure the success of a strength-based approach? What role does HR or l &D departments play in uh, supporting the implementation of a strength-based approach? In my experience, I've seen that what really works well when it comes to strength-based application is starting with CEO or your executive sponsor. Making them experience strength helps you create that buy-in uh, that you want to build. But I uh, would love to bring Manvi in here to talk about Manvi. Like, uh, how? What are some of the steps that you feel that we need to ensure for a successful uh, application of a strengths-based approach in an organization? Yeah, so Puneet, uh, thanks. Uh, and I completely agree with you that it has to start from the top because uh, I feel that for a strength-based approach to be successful, it must be embedded in the company's culture, vision, mission, values, processes, because the primary objective of all managers, supervisors, leaders should be to maximize you know, one another's strengths. So therefore, uh, you know, the decisions, key decision should be based on strengths. So like they say that, you know, there's a saying which common saying say that if a blind shepherd leads the sheep, both will fall into a pit. So it's also true for team leaders. So I think it also starts with leaders identifying their core strengths and areas, you know, that they are good at uh, to, to, to lead with better clarity. And this self-awareness uh, will enable leaders to be more sympathetic, more understanding and more encouraging uh, towards their subordinates um, and uh, and in, in fact if you see a lot of work when we do in organizations and a lot of the organization that you would have you know consulted with the the these kind of exercises are mostly done at the top because then it can trickle down when the leaders actually see the value and see the change it can actually get uh, you know trickle down uh, below and people will be the acceptance is going to be much more higher 
and when you're self aware of your strengths and weaknesses you'll be able to make better decisions better judgments and you will also be able to surround yourself with people who complement your strengths and weaknesses so i think it it starts with you know uh, getting into the core that is culture vision mission statements and then getting into other integrated hr processes like you know whether you are hiring or you are promoting or you know career planning succession planning everything uh, becomes a core in the strength based approach <clears throat> very true very true how about you john like like how does lnd contribute into this where do we uh, play a role in this thing uh you see one of the things like manvi said it, it, it is mindset okay if i don't buy into that concept it's going to be difficult right uh, one of the first things that we did was at least i did after my my certification was i came back and changed my email signature and i put my top 5 in the email signature because i wanted to tell myself that this is who i am and you're getting a mail from somebody who believes that these are my top 5 strengths all right and so i wanted people to uh, then ask me questions john what is that i saw something on your signature and then the conversation begins right and i still remember doing a session uh, for one of the uh, very senior director here in reliance and he brought his entire team on the program so he was sitting in the program all his reporty was or reportees were in the program and you should have seen at the end of it how they were relating to one another i don't think these guys ever would have done a kind of relationship uh with the boss like the way they did at the workshop because they were just all over the place they were trying to find out the boss's strengths the boss was trying to get the team's strengths i mean they were going for one another and i could really see uh, uh the team uh, bonding so very well and, and this is what it uh, and like manvi said you have to get it from the top now getting it from the top is going to be difficult how do i go to mr mukesh ambani and tell him that i want to drive a strengths program within the organization he, he probably have 100 questions right and therefore i need to put a proposal up and i'll have to get some key stakeholders who buy into the program because they themselves have been on the program then it becomes easier because they become my voice to sort of say yeah it works i've seen it work i think uh, mr ambani we should go for it so i think when you get that kind of an approach when you have people to support you with that kind of approach i think it will be good great great how about you krishnan like uh, where do you see us playing a role i mean in terms of uh, i mean ensuring success of strengths based approach in an organization so so we just concluded we just concluded or, you know, we just concluded our performance evaluation and reviews we have a system we call strengths based outcome management system where all our uh, managers and the next level do it at the start of the year there is a, a review as required and a mid year review and a year end review which is which is uh, in place after several steps that we went through during the last uh, 10 15 years so i mean i don't have one answer that can fit for all organizations you know different organizations are at different levels but for some organizations must be already in their strengths journey some may believe in strengths philosophy and wanting to move into direction some don't believe it and they're still not there yet. and for some uh, they must be hearing strengths philosophy for the first time so the idea will be to look at the organization uh, the context of the organization and see where they want to start it could be getting buy in it could be creating internal capability to scale it may be uh, you know creating systems and processes to build and sustain so it, it all depends on the organization uh, where the organization is today one simple way to see is uh, to to pilot something you know if if some of the participants wants to do something pilot something and and one trick there to pilot is to find a manager who is already there i mean you have several managers in your organization find someone who is already there and he is putting his strengths to use like you know if if he is already having his relating strengths in place or if he has already have you know some other areas you know i mean whichever it is you know we will have to identify and see what is that he is putting into play and you know how is he treating his team members is he able to personalize his approach to each of his team members or is he having a management style which is same across so if you find such a team a manager who is playing to his strengths 
who is able to uh, individualize or personalize his approach to his team members pick that team and work with that team put some systems in place and see how you can really strengthen the whole process and then you have an example to talk to otherwise we find it very difficult when we started we did the same thing we found managers who were already there and who, who wanted to really do it and then we did that and we had examples to talk about it. so that could give a good uh, good leverage into uh, into the strengths moment for any organization very true very true and as galab like we also want to recognize and appreciate organizations who are doing that in fact we recently started a don clifton strength based organization award to recognize such organizations who are who are doing that and in order to achieve that i think krishnan you've highlighted one very important point and that is managers as galab we strongly believe the key to solving anything within an organization is our people managers so the final question in the i'm um, trying to keep the track of the time as well is let's answer and figure out between us how can we empower our managers to adopt a strength based approach uh, not only to uh, employee development but uh, leadership as well what are some of the best practices that you've experienced uh, which we can use to train them in this area so how about with you john like like we let's start with you on this uh, how can we empower our managers to be uh, better leaders when it comes to strengths i just got a eureka moment right now you know uh, i'm going to take a statement now make a make a statement rather i don't know how far you will all agree but this is what i've seen i may be wrong when managers lead themselves they lead themselves with strengths but when they lead others they lead them on their failures or their weaknesses uh if you if you see anybody who's doing well today in the corporate life that person is using their strength come what may they may not admit it they may not know it but they're doing it otherwise you're not going to be on the top right that's number one but when they lead somebody else they unfortunately lead them finding out what the other person is deficient about right and this is fundamentally the problem how is it that when i lead myself I, I, I want to do everything good and I know what I'm good at and I know what brings the best out of me. But when it's somebody else, I want to fix the person and fix their weakness. This is a cultural issue. This is an issue that we need to fight. We need to sort of bring awareness to. Managers will have to come to the... I mean, if they only understand that it's going to be a win-win situation. Why? Because if that employee working with that manager... is able to bring the best out of them when the manager uses their strengths it's a win for the manager it's a win for the employee it's a win for the organization if this is understood i think our battle is already won unfortunately that's where i think the battle is very true very true how about you krishnan like in in this do you see uh, some focus like what can we do more to support our managers yeah definitely i think managers managers play a very very key role we call them boundary spanners you know, because they connect between the management and the teams so some of the key uh, i mean first of all the manager should be a right fit that's the first thing once you have the right fit then the next thing is to help managers uh, you know by right fit i mean they identify their own strengths and their strengths are at play and then you know helping them understand how they can have conversation around strengths with their team members help their team members identify we all have kris kpis so help them identify key result areas where they can apply their strengths and then create performance indicators and kpis on their areas of strengths and link it to a reward which is basically a strength based performance reward system or whatever you can call it. so once you have that you are helping an individual or you are helping a manager to help their team members spend more time on their areas of strength i mean it's a rare opportunity that any individual gets to spend 100% of the time on their areas of strength but as a manager the role is to move this needle slowly slowly and steadily as a manager am i helping my colleague spent more and more time on his areas of strength so year after year after year and you need patience i mean it's not going to happen next day right you need to be committed and you need to have patience so helping managers on this space first find that the manager is right fit his strengths are at play and then equip him to recruit for talent or strengths and have conversation around strengths 
and help him set a process in place where he helps his colleagues identify their key result area and performance indicators and link it to a performance. Once these things fall in place, you know, you will see how managers will be, you know, getting their energy out of strength movement. Brilliant, brilliant. Let's let's take Manvi also bring Manvi also in this, and then let's move to the Q and A. Manvi, how can we support our managers to be better leaders on strengths? I think you know this question has already been answered by you know both John and Krishnan, and I would just like to add that you know uh, strength based. We should uh, managers need to work on developing a strength based organization, which basically means that you know very positive growth focused excellence focused sh approach should underpin every aspect of organizational existence uh, and there are several areas in which it can be done whether you're attracting selecting onboarding engaging retaining talent anything that you do and uh, and you know it is i think one of the things that you know we can, I can just like there are so many things but one of the things that i can touch upon here is that you know you work on a vision and you communicate the vision and mission that supports the organization's strength based approach and you work on an evp which actually ha is anchored on a strength based approach that becomes very very because you're not talking about not only talking about it internally but you're also talking about externally that what you stand for and then there are several things that can go on so making uh, you know all this uh, a very integral part of your organizational functioning is very very important that is brilliant that is brilliant thank you that, that's a great great point but with that if it's okay with everyone uh, let's move to the q and a part of the uh, discussion today and then we'll have some concluding thoughts towards the end as well uh, i see some of the questions uh, in here that we've already talked about one thing which we talked about was how do we get buy-in from senior leadership and then we've already uh, discussed that um, let me pick few questions and then uh, let's let's answer those so one point uh, that i see that how can the strength based approach be more balanced uh, meaning how can we balance this with also focusing on improving in, in our developmental areas as well uh, I see this as something uh, which which uh, focuses on uh, what we were talking earlier that you need to focus on your lesser talents as well in order to manage them. Uh, but one distinction, and I would love to bring John in on this, that uh, having this balance approach, uh, like the question there mainly talks about that, can it put us in our comfort zone? That is something that uh, would love to hear your point of view on this. Now let me let me take the, the example of Usain Bolt, right? Usain Bolt is got only one goal in his life. What is that goal? I want to be the fastest. Nothing else is important for him, right? Mm -hmm. For him to be the fastest is what it is. So he will focus on whatever it takes to make him a little extra faster to break that break that world record, right? Mm -hmm. now, that's, if that is the focus for Usain Bolt, and of course all of us are not as fast as him and can't be as well. What is my focus? What do I want to do at the corporate level in my job that I will do it excellently? That every time I step up to that place, I do it excellently well. For me, it is the, the ability to stand in front of an audience and speak. Now, that comes naturally to me. You give me that 24 by 7, 365 days, I can do that, right? But now if I change cultures, for example, today I take you out from India, put you in front of a, a European audience and I want you to talk. Now there, things have changed. Now it's a different audience. I now need to relate to the audience and I need to now connect with the audience. That requires a different skill. So I need to make that investment of time to skill myself so well that next time when I stand in front of an European audience, I still do it as good as what I do with an Indian audience. And this is exactly what I need to do. Focus. See, unfortunately, you're still focusing on how to improve my areas of weaknesses rather than investing in my areas of strength, which I already have, which makes me better. Right. I already am good at it, but we never talk about it. It's like it's like, you know, building muscle just because you have muscle today. It doesn't mean that you'll have muscle 10 years from here. Right. You've got to keep pumping iron. And if I don't focus on my strengths tomorrow, it will not be there. And our conversations with managers and people in the system should be, okay, you're good at this now. How can I make you better at this 
tomorrow on the same thing. That conversation is the change and the fundamental change we need to have. So the balance, I don't know the question about balance, but I'm saying focus on what you already have and see what you can be better tomorrow on the same thing. True. And True. keep working at it till you be the, the world's best or the expert on that. Very true. Very true. Uh, if I just add on, you know, I think very beautifully said by John. And uh, just like to add on is that, you know, this is something that is not new. Even Peter Drucker spoke about it. In fact, in his uh, book, that Managing Oneself, he speaks about this saying that it takes far more energy to improve from incompetence to mediocrity than to improve from first rate performance to excellence. So, you know, basically what John was saying. So it basically means that it is much easier to work on developing your existing strength than on work, working on your weakness. And the payoff, he said, better. But of course, you know, we've had already had discussion that where we also need to have a more balanced approach. Where is it actually going to pay off? And where actually we need to be focusing on our areas of improvement. Got it, got it. I, I see one very interesting uh, question in here, which is, uh, so the questions are on the line of how can organizations measure the success of a strength-based approach? Like uh, what kind of metrics maybe we can be uh, tracking for that? Uh, so Krishnan, you talked about KPIs and those things. I would love to hear from you that uh, if you were to, like with KPIs, you're measuring the success of a manager in application. But if we were to check that uh, our efforts on strength-based approach are working. I think that that's what the audience is hinting at. Yeah, I think, the... I think uh, from Gallup and all, I'm sure you may be having various methods of measuring it and definitely uh, that could help many organizations who definitely, I mean, who want to see the kind of change. But I mean, well, there can be a lot of sophisticated tools to measure. What what I'm saying is if, if you're in the game, you know it, the engagement, you know, the drive to go beyond the demands of the role. I mean, like what I said earlier, the enthusiasm and the curiosity to learn and grow. And finally, the outcome for which you have your team performance, which speaks about it and how sustainable it is. See, like what we see, the, the certain things which we practice today may not be, I mean, really keeping the people there and growing for a longer period of time. Whereas the strength based approach, you will see that, you know, people keep on growing and developing. And like what Panadi said, you know, they get excellence. It is not moving from somewhere and reaching here, but taking them to excellence. So look at all these things within the organization and those can also be a good measure. Yes, that is that is fantastic. Uh, and I think like we are at the top of the hour, but any concluding thoughts from John, Manvi and Krishnan, you as well, I think that would be uh, great. And this has been a fantastic discussion. We actually, I realize we've got so many different uh topics and themes came out from uh this rich discussion but would love to hear some concluding thoughts from everyone let's let's start with john like like uh like in your opinion like uh, how would you conclude our uh, panel discussion today yeah um yeah i was just mulling over what to say as concluding thoughts because I've given all my thoughts in the panel. But uh, see, I, I'm so hooked on to strengths because I work this not only professionally, but also personally. Um, you know, uh, at the age of 50, I picked up the, to play the saxophone. Uh, that was approximately um, four years ago. Uh, today, because of intense practice and skill over a period of time, I can play a song uh, that you will say, wow. Uh, you know, uh, and that is what it is. That's what we want people to say. Um, if your people listening to you after every training or learning session would come back and tell you that this is the best program that I have ever attended, you know you're working in your areas of strength. Because uh, then you can go on to the next session and keep doing that and furthering and better and better and better and sharpening every single time that you're standing up and talking. For me, it's talking. For Krishna, it could be something else. For Manvi, it could be something else. But whatever it is, whatever you do, you're doing it with a kind of an excellence. And people around you say, this is a fantastic product. When they say that, you are working in your areas of strength. And so uh, I love that equation where talent multiplied over time, uh, put the investment, put the knowledge, put the skill, 
who will result into strength. And that's what we want people really, uh, really come to at every single point of time. And if managers can actually make that team realize that faster, the outcome is going to be brilliant. And I can guarantee you that you love working with that manager for life. Very true, very true. And in fact, like we have this saying uh, that, and I'm sure it's kind of a cliche, everyone has heard that people join organizations, leave managers. So having a manager who's constantly weakness fixing, I know yeah. it could be very, very uh, yeah, disengaging. True, true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as Puneet said, you know, maybe the time went off. I mean, it's already time to conclude. Yes. So, so it's like, you know, when, I mean, for me, it was very short kind of, I lost track of time during the conversation. Some of, I mean, there are many participants listening to this conversation now, and some of you, some of them must be feeling, can we extend this? Can, how can I learn more? And how can I apply this in my organization or to myself? But at the same time, um, don't take me wrong. You know, some of the participants may also feel, okay, it's already time to end, or is it not ending? You know, I mean, what I'm saying is just let's confront reality to ourselves. I mean, am I playing on my areas of strength? If you, if you. If you are on that space, you will learn faster. You will want to learn. You will really want to learn and grow. But if you are really feeling drained, maybe that is not you know the connect that you are able to establish. So that may be a good concluding thought that I thought you know I would just share. Yeah, thank you very much. So thank you everyone. I think we've had a wonderful discussion. We really went to the details of a strength-based approach, and uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure the audience would have realized that you know there is, uh, you know, there is this stuff needs to be explored to all those who haven't explored. And uh, I mean, I think uh, we've given a quite a detailed insights, both conceptual as well as real life applications. And I think in a post-pandemic world that we are in, where everybody is talking about agility. And agility and strengths are very closely uh, connected. When you're agile and when you know your strengths, you can be agile. So I think it's very, very important that, uh, you know, we are aware of our strengths, we understand our strengths and, uh, and, and then move forward. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to thank all our panel members today. And thank you everyone for joining. Uh, let's bring Jerry, Jerry in as well and conclude the session. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I think like Krishnan said, it's one of those topics where we didn't know where time went. It was just incredibly engaging. So uh, thank you, Puneet, Krishnan, John, Manvi for the key takeaways. I personally took a lot of notes, ideas uh, for us to build on as well. Uh, I'd like to extend a, gr a gratitude to our partner, uh, Gallup, as well uh, for making this session possible. So in the interest of time, we'll wrap it here. It's been a pleasure hosting you all today. Uh, so in case our audience have any more questions, do send it to us. We will have it answered by our speakers offline. And uh, stay tuned for more such exciting discussions. Have a great day, everyone. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Bye, thank you for being here. Bye, Madhuri, Krishna. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.